Iqra says, does a wife need her husband's permission every time she steps out of the house? What if the husband is out of town? Must she call him every time to take his permission? The general trend is that a woman must deal with her husband with respect and obedience because this is what will admit her to Jannah. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, four things. If a woman succeeds in doing them, she will enter Jannah. If she prays her fard prayers, the five daily prayers, fasts her Ramadan, protects her chastity, and obeys her husband, she will enter paradise from any gate she wants. <clears throat> and this by itself is nothing compared to what men have to do in order to qualify to enter Jannah. So we think. But it, indeed, it's a heavy burden and a great task for women to undertake. And this is their test in this life. In the authentic hadith, in the incident of Ifq, where the hypocrites slandered Mother Aisha, in the long hadith in Bukhari and elsewhere, when she discovered what they were plotting and saying behind her back, she fell sick. But she said, O Prophet of Allah, do you permit me to visit my parents? <clears throat> this, the scholars say, is a clear indication that a woman must not leave her house without the permission of her husband. Now, generally speaking, normal husbands give an open permission. I give my wife an open permission to leave wherever she wants, to go wherever she wants. Because I trust her, I have no problem with that. However, my wife, till date, does not go without informing me I'm going to my mom's house, I'm going to do this or that, I'm going to visit a friend. And I say, you don't have to say that to me. She said, no, I feel it's my obligation. And this is normal, but if the husband insists, in this case, yes, you have to seek his permission. Having said that, some men exaggerate and they make their wives live in a prison. So they totally force them to boycott their family. Don't go and visit your parents. You're not allowed to see your siblings. You're not allowed to go out. And the woman feels suffocated. Now, in so many cases, such relationships end up in divorce, but after it's too late, like after 20 years or so. This is due to the woman being too submissive. Yes, you're obliged to obey him, but there is a limit when the man exceeds logic and rationale, and he insists your gold that your parents gave you, that my family gave you, that your friends gave you, you have to give it to me, I'll keep it with my mom. And she complies, are you nuts? Why would you give it to him? Oh, he's my husband, Sheikh. So what? He does not have any right over your financial possessions. Say no. Oh, he may threaten me to divorce. The hell with him. Astaghfirullah So what? It's better to live with dignity and honor and set the record straight with this man instead of him using you as a doormat. Yes, you are obliged to obey him, to honor him, to be dutiful to him, but he's not allowed to transgress. So your financial accounts, I need your ATM, I have to know the password. Show me your mobile, show me your passcode, show me your emails, tell me the passwords. Why? You make him wipe his feet every time he enters the door because you're a doormat, you deserve what you get. Draw the line and tell him, listen, 
Hun, we are a husband and wife. I'm obliged to obey you, but you're obliged to respect me and to treat me like a woman, not like a servant or a slave. And unfortunately, we have an imbalance. And this imbalance causes a lot of such problems. So to come to answer your question, yes, you have to ask him for permission, but also you have to uh, analyze and <clears throat> see how the relationship is going so that you can evaluate your marriage.